Well, my first guest was a successful businessman as well as governor of South Dakota before becoming that state senator in the year 2015. He serves on five important committees, ranging from banking and small business to the military, veterans affairs, and the environment. He spent one-on-one -on -one time with Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh, and he's had a front row seat for the confirmation hearings that have sometimes degenerated into a mud fight. Maybe we should ask, can the Senate ever be pulled back from its worst partisan impulses? We'll talk about that right now with Senator Mike Rounds. Maybe I should tell everybody that we've been longtime friends. We have. Served together as governors of our respective states and have spent a lot of time. Should we tell them that we were invited to sing the national anthem at Lambeau Field in well, Green Bay, Wisconsin? Let's just say that uh, Governor Huckabee was invited to sing and he needed a chorus. <laughs> and Is that you fair? and uh, then Governor Dirk Kemp Thorne, we all went to the middle of the field and we did it. And I'm surprised there's not a plaque up at that. And, and it was amazing how bright the lights were. That's right. Lambeau Field. That's right. This Someday true. we'll tell you the rest yeah. of the story. <laughs> One of the things you have been working on diligently is cybersecurity. You're the chairman of that subcommittee. We know it's important, but do we even want to know how important it is? Yeah, I, I, th I think we do. Look, here's the, the, the deal. Cyber impacts everything. If you're going to go to the bank, if uh, you're going to turn your water on, if you're going to turn an electric light on, everything is connected now by computers. Same thing with the infrastructure that our national government works on with regard to financial institutions, our Defense Department, and so forth. Today, the United States uh, uh, Department of Defense has responsibilities in air, land, sea, and also in the cyber realm, because if the bad guys can get in and impact any one of your aircraft or your ships or your armed forces that are on land, they can slow down the capabilities that we have as a nation. And so one of our responsibilities is to expedite our ability to not only defend against those attacks coming in from overseas, but to also be able to respond aggressively and go after the bad guys before they actually hurt people in our country. Is there any evidence at all that any foreign government, China, Russia, anybody, has tapped into our voting system and changed votes? No. So there's two parts to it. Number one is, is are they getting in and actually impacting the election systems themselves? The answer to that is no. And in fact, we're actually doing more now with the, the Safe Elections Act. Mm. Uh, we're spending about $380 million coming up to make sure that every single state has a, an election system that if you even suspect there's something wrong, we can go back in and audit the results to make sure nobody tampered. But the other part, the impact of them actually meddling in the information, providing propaganda, that has been ongoing. Now, I'm going to give the president a lot of credit for this. He did an executive order just recently, September 4th, in which he made it very clear to every country out there that if they get in and they're caught meddling in our election process, that there will be sanctions imposed rapidly by the Secretary of the Treasury and the Secretary of State, and it will be an expedited process. You know, I'm wondering if we're going to have to do something about uh, U.S. companies like Google and Twitter that seem to taint information and lean it one way or the other, because that is a serious issue. How do you deal with that? Transparency. What we want is, is transparency throughout the process, which means even if these folks are going to try to do something, and, and, and I, I truly don't believe that there's a conspiracy out there to do that. But if there is the case where you have individuals who can manipulate something, the best way to address it is transparency, to allow people more opportunities to look at differing points of view. It's like not having a monopoly on good information. So the more good data we can get from multiple sources, the better off we're going to be. Senator, let's talk about uh, the contentious nature of Washington and specifically the Senate. We've seen it through the Kavanaugh hearings. It's been uh, a rough and tumble moment. Uh, do you give us any hope that there can be some type of time when we would return where there would still be strong differences and, and sharp political battles, but civility? I can tell you there are Republicans and Democrats alike that I really respect. They care deeply about this country. They may have differing points of view about where we want to go and how we want to get there, but they're good people, and they really do care. And it doesn't make the news, but I can just tell you, there's groups of us that do prayer breakfasts, 
There's groups of us that do Bible studies, and we do it on a bipartisan basis. We sit down and, and we do it together. You can't do anything in the United States Senate without bipartisan work. But take a look at what we've been able to do. Uh, and, and this may sound like it's not much, but for the Senate, this is a lot. Uh, first of all, uh, we've actually passed the National Defense Authorization Act for the earliest time in literally decades. We did it, and this is the new John S. McCain National Defense Authorization Act. This is already done, it's passed, and, and it, isn't even, it, isn't even, or it isn't even October yet. This is just unheard of in the, you know, the current situation in Washington. We've actually agreed to a budget for two years in a row. We've actually got an appropriations process that will do defense and non-defense spending, which is only about 30% of the budget, but we're gonna have more than three quarters of it done before October 1st. Some people will say you ought to have the whole thing done, and I agree, but it hasn't been done in over 20 years. But we're doing it because we're working side by side to try to show the American people that we really do want to get some things done. Well, I hope you can be successful at it because the country depends upon it. It does. Senator, it is great having you here. It's great to see you. Give my best to Gene, your family. And to you, Jen. Uh, wonderful, wonderful folks you are. South Dakota people, salt of the earth. And what you see here, see what you see with this gentleman in front of the cameras, is the way he is in real life every single day. He's the real guy. And I, I just really appreciate the opportunity. That is very Thank kind. You. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very much. much. You bet. Bye-bye. Thank you. Well, my thanks to Senator Mike Rounds for joining us. I hope that senators like Mike Rounds can help some sanity prevail and decency could be restored to the functions of our government. If you'd like to keep up with them online, visit rounds.senate.gov.